This is 15 Minutes of Freedom. I'm your host, Elite Life Optimization Coach, Ryan Nidell, and today is the last episode. Today's it. Today is the last official episode of 15 Minutes of Freedom. And I couldn't be more appreciative of you coming along at any point in this journey, especially the commemorative last episode. And you're going to want to stick tight for this episode. There's a lot of stuff I need to share. And there's a little something I need from you. So here we sit, right? It's basically 435 episodes. The better part of a year and two months of consistent daily content. Right, I'm not exactly sure where things sit, but we are estimating somewhere between 230 and 240 hours of my voice sharing a message, a lesson, a gift, some pain, some turmoil, a little bit of everything over the past 435 episodes. That's a better part of five weeks of consistent content. It's crazy to think of all the things that I have been through and that you have shared with me. Right, if I go all the way back to the first 20 or 30 episodes, we were in a new office. I'd recorded the episodes, I believe, fairly close to or right around the time that my best friend Miles ended up passing away. He overdosed on cocaine that was laced with fentanyl. Right, we originally thought it was heroin. He had battled with addiction. Whole nother story. Right, that's, that's just one of those things. I remember crying on air. Like losing my best friend and, and sharing that message and originally being just convinced it was, it was heroin, right? That was the story. That was what we were told. Then over time, a few months later, some new details came out and realized it wasn't heroin. It was cocaine laced with fentanyl. It opened up the scar again, right? I get to cry and I get to sob and I get to really open that wound that wasn't all the way closed. And I feel incredibly blessed to get to share that with you. Then in addition to that, you know, I uncovered all the things that I had been running from for so long, and it means the world that you listen to any of it, right? go going back to the lies that I had told, the use of anabolic steroids for years, the absence on my leg, the immense highs that I had experienced from great financial abundance to the lowest of the low of having my truck repossessed and basically going bankrupt. We spoke about infidelity, not only on every woman that I had ever dated, but when I first met who is now my wife, being involved in a completely different relationship and what that all looks like. At some point after I shared that, right, bringing her onto the show and having her perspective, the very first episode we launched together was called Our First Six Months. And it goes back through those painful six months. They were beautiful in totality, but the pain that I had created by not being myself. And then the pain and the turmoil I caused in her life and also in other people's lives based off my poor decisions and my inability to tell the truth. She then became a daily part of the show, just as book reviews became a part of the show and interviews became a part of the show. And we tried different things. It's right around this point that the office The old office, the original office, the office that Miles and his father built, took new shape, took new form. We went from white walls and some art. We then backed it up with some blue and black tiles and had a much different look and feel to it. And it was incredible. right? we're, we're, We're almost into May. And May, right? I remember landing in California for my wedding to my wife, Lindsay. And as I land, seeing that Somehow, we have ranked ourselves in the top one or two in all of iTunes podcasts. And that couldn't be possible without you. Now, in full transparency, as I look back, we did everything we could to game the system. Right? I paid promoters. I ran traffic. I sent emails to mailing lists. I did everything I could to ensure the fact I got on that list. Because that list matters. And there's a chance you're listening right now because you saw the podcast somewhere on a list, and you said, you know what? I'd be super curious to, to see what this guy has to say. And for that, I, I, I love you. I appreciate you for jo- joining us for that. 
prior to that, I went to an incredible experience called Warrior Week right, with Wake Up Warrior and Garrett J. White. Came back a different person. I knew that I wanted to be the best version of self prior to getting married to my wife. It was a meaningful, impactful, and pivotal time in my life in which I had to go through it to be the man that I am today. It does not define me. It did for a moment of time, but it certainly doesn't now. It's just another brick in the wall that is being built that comprises my life. Through this time, I have incredible interviews. I get to share time and space with brilliant people. I'm gaining more notoriety and traction, and life is good. Life is good from telling the truth. Life is good from just owning who I am and what's important to me. Life is good from sharing it and having you reciprocate the love that I'm pouring in. Realizing that I too am not alone. That it's okay that I am who I am. And so there's, there's some things that go on, right? Eventually, I finally pull back the curtain and let everybody see behind, you know, we'll say where the Wizard of Oz sits, and I share that I've been coaching for some time. And that I would be honored, if you've been listening to my words, if you would consider joining me in a journey that I'd alter some things and create one of seven, that I'd work with seven individuals in a more intimate capacity at a much discounted price point to alter the trajectory of their life. And we did that. And it was a beautiful experience getting to see people from all ages, all walks of life, all socioeconomic standards, all beliefs, all getting some sort of version of their own miracle. And that miracle can mean anything to anyone at any time. But it was such a beautiful thing for me to experience and document and go through the process as I'm building out what is my coaching business. You see, during that same window of time, I realized all the things I had ever been doing to acquire quote-unquote wealth were leaving my soul empty. I realized the consistent pursuit of capital wasn't what actually drove me to be who I am. And that a CBD business or the next digital marketing hustle that I could get into didn't serve who I really was, doesn't serve who I am. And that my biggest gift, not only to myself, but to the world, is the fact that I love to share love and make sure that people are heard. Just as much as I love to be heard and to feel loved. And from that standpoint, I got very clear on auditing what it is that I do and how I do it and who I do it with. And I pushed out the variables of life that no longer made sense. I sold off companies. I shut down businesses. I recalibrated what mattered. In the midst of having a successful business, I shut it down and sold it because it didn't line up anymore. Because I didn't need to be that version of self. And so I pushed all my chips on the table, right? I went all in on on what we'll call coaching. That's what I was calling it then. And I got feedback and I got pushback. Like, what, what makes me qualified to coach? And I didn't know. Right? It's such a nebulous term. How do you define what a coach is? I know what I've been through in my life. I know what I've overcome. I know what I have achieved. I know I can help people. I know the books that I've read, the seminars I've attended, the money that I've spent. And I share that all very openly. Right? I look at it like I get to be the Cliff Notes version. If you want to go to Warrior Week and a bunch of Wake Up Warrior stuff, if you want to go to Tony Robbins events, if you want to spend money with him and Dr. Shafali and Human Potential Institute and Kyle Cease and read a hundred and some odd books and get deep in the psychological rabbit hole that exists and get your, you know, it's not official, right? But get your doctrine of metaphysics. You can, right? This is five years worth of consistent work hundreds of thousands of dollars spent. And so that gives me a certain level of accreditation, in my opinion. And certainly, right, I graduate from Human Potential Institute. I get the fancy ICF accreditation after my name, the International Coaching Federation. I'll be master certified. 
It doesn't mean anything. It means I can walk into corporate America and have them recognize me as someone of value. But lately I've been feeling compelled more and more to potentially go down the path of an undergraduate degree in psychology. Because the field as itself is incredibly fascinating. And I know when I can compare ways that people think to why they think that way and I can offer them new perspective that allows them to grow and mature their thought process and their own internal model, I see massive change in people. Right, it's not that long ago that I realized the coach doesn't really fit me. Right, when this all started, I had unleashed the king. I was the the ultra masculine male version of my coaching. It was only going to be for men, because women wouldn't want to hear what I had to say. That's all nonsense. That's not true at all. I love everybody equally. And so, unleash the king eventually turned into the life optimization group. Because I feel like no matter where you're at in life, there is something that can be optimized, increased, could become more efficient, and that you could feel better doing. All right, we all want to make more money by spending less time and have a better body. We want to live as long as we can. We want to optimize the human experience. And across, back then it was body being balanced and business, which was learned from Wake Up Warrior, but now it's pivoted into fitness, faith, family, and finance. It was originally brought to my attention by a guy named Kevin Nations. If you don't follow Kevin Nations on social media, please track him down on Facebook. Brilliant man with so much, so much power and wisdom. He's an incredible source and resource for all of us. Right, and so the belief of the company changes. It's it's no longer Unleash the King. It's Life Optimization Group, and it's now Fitness, Faith, Family, and Finances. And I'm no longer a coach. And I'm a specialist. I have a very special skill set from what I've been through at this point in my life. I know that I can, special with the specialties that I have, if it becomes something that you need tweaked, that you want additional input as it pertains to your body, you don't care about anything else, I have the reps and I have the access to people to help me really dial that in like a specialist would. I don't want to coach you on your body. I want to get very tactical with you. I want to go deep with you. I want to educate you across the board so that long after I'm gone that you have taken the skills that I have and they've adopted them to be your own. And all that comes in a new sense of awareness. And so this gets me up to November or so. In November of last year, first part of November, all of a sudden iTunes cleans house. And the beauty of 15 Minutes of Freedom being in the top 20 overall podcast from doing all the crazy marketing stuff that we were doing, keyword cramming and paying promoters and maybe even click farms, right? At this point, we're banned. We're on the naughty list. We're on the blacklist. We are pushed into the great abyss. Or even right now, if you went to the search bar and typed in 15 minutes to and waited, freedom wouldn't pop up. You have to actively search for us. You have to type in the entire name. We're the only podcast that I can find that you have to do that to. That's with almost 2,900 reviews, of which 2,750 are five-star. I love you for that. I love you for pouring into me. I love you for finding some sort of message and gift in my lessons and my musings and hopefully applying it to your life and not just consuming it. But as they go through their update in the first part of November, and we're pushing the abyss, we fall off the list, we fall off the ranking, and the daily listens go from 18,000 a day, and now we're at about 6,000 a day. And that's okay, because the 6,000 that tune in, I love you all just the same. But the ego version of me, the man in November, was hurt, he was frustrated, wanted to blame everyone else. It was nobody else's fault but my own. I wanted to push. I wanted to get right up against the edge of the cliff. But unfortunately, I got too close to the edge and I fell over. So we went back and forth, or I've went back and forth with iTunes. If it's 10 times, it's 30 times. Trying to figure out how to get things dialed in to get back on the ranking. And it just, push comes to shove, it's never going to happen. So as much as I love the show and love sharing 15 Minutes to Freedom with you, Sometime after the first of the year, things started tugging at me. 
that it was going to be time for a change. But I pushed it out. Right? I did everything I could to not have it be a part of what reality was. I was looking so forward to getting to episode 365, a year straight of daily content. And of course, we made it. Because I committed to four years of content. And if it's four, it might as well be 14. Because I found that I really enjoy this. And as polarizing as this statement might be, I'm actually very, very good at it. And so, we're moving through this year. We'll get to the 365th episode sometime after April 20th. At that point, I sit down with the team and say, we're going to have to change some things. This just isn't working. Listenership is going down. Reach is going down. Sponsorship opportunities are decreasing. And there's an irony to this. If you go back into the episodes in the 300s, there's a point in which I say, I know something is going to change around episode 420, 425, maybe 415. I just know it. I know we shouldn't take on any sponsors. I know we shouldn't do anything until after that point. There's going to be some big change that happens then. Whether that's my higher self or God or intuition or my gut or whatever you identify with, here we sit at episode 435, and there's a massive change coming. The massive change is a new podcast. The massive change is a new format. The massive change is here. And I'm welcoming it. I'm not fighting it. You see, I realize it's a risky move putting 15 minutes of freedom on the shelf, saying no more. Because there's still six or 7,000 of you that listen. I love you for it, sincerely. But when my heart tells me to move, I have to move. I look at the heart and the soul as being one and the same. And the brain is just meant to execute on the heart's desire. And so for quite some time, the get shit done ideology, the, the vulgarity, the things like that energetically don't align with me right now. It's not that I don't believe in pushing forward. It's not that I don't believe in optimizing everything that we do. It's just at some point, there's more to life than just that. I can teach anybody how to work more hours, to push through difficult things, to beat their head against the wall. Where the true gift comes is helping people understand why they have done what they have done, who taught them to think that way, create new beliefs around that and increase efficiency in driving people towards what they actually want to do versus what they feel obligated to do. And that's where the next season of life takes us to. Right? The Optimized Life Show is going to be new, different, truly optimized. And let me explain why that is. As much as I love a catchy jingle at the beginning of the show, I know that's 5, 10, 15 seconds of your time that we don't need to give up. I don't need to take that from you. I can jump right in and let you know exactly what the podcast is going to be about that day, say hello to you, and then jump into the content. The content itself is going to get deeper. It's going to take the principles and thoughts and things that I know work, and it's going to run them deep. And as new things come into my peripheral, as new understandings come into my soul, I'm going to share them with you the same way that I do now. But with incredible impact. Right, I don't feel obligated to churn out content just to simply churn out content. What I want to do and what I am doing is creating something that has depth. There's no longer going to be the consistent cadence of Interviews on Thursdays, wife episodes on Saturdays, book reviews on Sundays. That's all gone. What happens now is when meaningful and impactful guests that align with where I'm at and how I think, that I want to have a deep conversation with, that are willing to be vulnerable, willing to be very real, when they want to come on the show, love to have them. 
I'm super curious if there's people that you know that align with who that is. Drop me an email, ryan at lifeoptimizationgroup.com. Tell me who the people are. I'll reach out to them. No more superficial stuff. And not that there's anything wrong with any of the guests that I've had. They've all been incredible in their own right. But I want to go deep. And I'm going to. Moreover, I'm going to peel back more of the layers on what being a specialist is all about. And part of that is sharing calls. Yes, actual coaching calls. Part of that is opening up live dialogue between you and I to answer your questions real time. To walk you through exactly what I would do if you were my client. No more one directional conversation. We start going live in a capacity that allows us to record calls and air them as episodes. Because there's nothing that I do that's secretive as it pertains to really anything but specifically this life optimization. I want you to know why I think how I think. I want you to have the depth of the resources that I have. I want you to experience what clients go through. I want you to have access to the same people that I have access to. And I'm going to give away a lot more. The majority of the episodes, where it's applicable, will have some sort of associated content. Right, Either a resource guide, a PDF, a transcription. There's going to be something where you have the opportunity to download it. I do that because I know statistically that listening to something is great, reading something is even better, writing down notes on something makes it even more so, and then teaching it to somebody else really perfects that That quadrant. And when I say perfects, there is no perfection, but what it does is it allows you to retain way more than you ever could have imagined. You see, I'm going to be a life optimization specialist forever. And I'm consistently going to have access to new ideas and new people. So if you have, I'll say, coached with me before, I'm not the same version now as I was a year ago. I'm not the same version now I was six months ago. I'm not the same version I was three months ago. And this podcast has been an excellent reminder of that. Because as I sit here, officially stand here in a brand new office that is seven miles from our house, which makes it so I get home earlier, so my commute is optimized. So my travel time is different. So my frustration is lower. So my heart rate variability is higher, right? There's things that go into life that these are not just coy terms that I coined. I'm working diligently daily to live an optimized experience. And I will be sharing that with you consistently. In addition to just me, there are more shows that will be coming throughout the month of July and into August. The Optimized Health Show with Taylor Sappington, where she gets very deep down the rabbit hole of health and wellness from a integral practitioner's uh, viewpoint and vantage point. Lindsay and I, my wife, we have the Optimized Relationship, right, where we take our weekly show, we turn it into a show that has two episodes a week, where turn I bantering back and forth, having a, a regular conversation. Lindsay has her show, The Optimized Woman. And all these shows are built around an idea that the more that we give, the more that we can help, the better we all become. Because I've realized something over the past three months is I've been called to, to drop 15 minutes to freedom and, and pick up the Optimized Life Show. I've gotten really good at asking and I've shied away from giving. And while I can't change what I did yesterday, I certainly can make a better plan for tomorrow. And that ends up being the cornerstone for what the Optimized Life Show is all about. Is simply giving. 
Because it's been said over and over again that practicing gratitude actually makes you happier. And happier people typically have a higher IQ. And so I have something that I would ask back from you for being a guest along this journey with me. If you would do me a favor and type in optimized life show in the search bar and go ahead and follow it, right? Subscribe to it. When you subscribe to it, you'll see right, there's already one episode that's, that's new. That's a real episode. There's an intro episode and a real episode. I know very specifically now how iTunes works. I've had enough conversations back and forth. I want to organically rank on the new and noteworthy section of iTunes. And I can only get there with your help. In the first week, in order to hit that list, I need 100 five-star reviews and 20 written reviews. So I'm not going to beg you to review and leave something good. If you don't like the episode, if you don't like what I share, don't leave a comment. But if you do, it would mean the world to me for you to press five star and then type up a, a written review saying whatever it is that you want to say. In the second week, I need 200, right? So I need an additional hundred and I need an additional 20 on the written reviews. And on the third week, same over. So no matter when you stumble upon this message, if you would do me the distinct honor and privilege of going into the search bar, typing in Optimize Life Show, subscribing to the show itself, downloading an episode, listen to it in its entirety, even if you, even if you press the, the triple fast forward for the first show, iTunes also tracks listen through rate. So for you to leave a review without listening to the content doesn't really work. It would mean the world to me if you would do this. My goal is to do it right and do it better the second time around. Because it's been an incredible past 435 days. It's been amazing to turn out five plus weeks of content. It's been incredible to speak to the brilliant individuals that I've had the opportunity to share time and space with. And it's also been the biggest blessing to get to know so many of you. It's my goal and my wish that this continues as we go forward through life together, that we don't lose touch and that you come join me in the next version, in the next iteration, that it's an optimized life show. I share all this with you that no, to remind you of something that I believe is the most impactful lesson I could ever share. And that lesson is as follows. No matter where you are at in life, no matter what it is that you have going on, when your heart tells you to do something, you should do it. And that the fear that you have to jump off the cliff because you don't know if the parachute's going to open, it always will, just never when you want it to. I have no problem saying I'm scared to death to jump off the cliff right now. Because the podcast works, the format works, you listen, and things have been good. But my heart tells me to jump, and that's exactly what I'm doing. No different than there's something inside of you right now that tells you to do something different. I'm going to encourage you to do it. Because if I'm willing to walk away from a successful business in the past 12 months and a successful podcast today, in order to fulfill my soul's purpose... I can't come up with something that you should be holding on to that tightly that you're afraid to walk away from it. So my friend, if you would do me again, that distinct honor of going to the search bar, typing an optimized life show, listening to an episode all the way through, leaving a five-star review, leaving a written review, sending it out to the world. That is exactly what it will take to help me moving forward get shit done. <laughs>